What's up guys, it's Automotive Anonymous, and that is the 2023 Subaru Ascent Touring. It's the pinnacle of the Ascents. Generously borrowed by Twin Falls Subaru in Southern Idaho. I'll link them below if you're interested. It's below MSRP and they're good people to work with. Otherwise, we're gonna go through the specs, a walk around, zero to 60, driving impressions, final thoughts, and decide if it's worth your time and hard earned money. Is this the vehicle you're looking for? While I have your attention, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing to help the channel grow. I'd really appreciate it. And for those of you who already have, thank you guys so much. It's really fun to connect and feel your support. Otherwise, getting right into it, this is the Ascent Touring. It's the pinnacle. It's the eighth of eight trim levels. It replaced the Tribeca starting in 2018. The Ascent's, the base model is 34,000. This one would start at 48,000 both destination and some LED lighting upgrades. It's closer to 50 grand. What makes the Touring its own trim level, its highest class above the Limited and the Onyx Limited, is Napa Leather Navigation. Panoramic sunroof is standard. 792 watt Harman Kardon speakers, which there are 14 of, and 360 degree cameras, which you can see on the turn signals, on the front grille, obviously on the rear. There's a lot of really cool features associated with this model. It even has the fourth gen eyesight system, which is three cameras. You can see the heads up display through the windshield. And then of course it has all the lane centering, lane departure, rear automatic braking, all the features you'd expect. Subaru sells 36,000 to 81,000 of these a year in the US. It's a top safety pick plus the gas tank door is on the passenger side. It's a 19.3 gallon tank and getting up to 25 highway means you can get about 480 on an excursion if you're on the road. 16 and a half feet long, six and a half feet wide, six feet tall. It weighs 4,500 pounds, which is the same as three lightweight dairy cows. It can tow 5,000 pounds, which means you can tow an ascent behind the ascent if you wanna buy two of these bad boys. And let's get right into it for a few more exterior features so that we can get out of the cold. It's a 245, 50, 20. The wheel looks really nice. There's a steel wheel in the back. It has the chrome, brushed chrome looking side mirrors, which when you lock the vehicle, they fold in. Pretty cool feature. We're gonna unlock the vehicle. You can see the chrome lining around the parameter of the windows, chrome on the door handle, proximity key means you can lock it, again, that way, or you can unlock it. Subaru likes to give you a lot of options for how to get in and out of your vehicle. To the door panels, they look really nice, lots of stitching throughout. We have the wood finish, we have memory seats, we have a really soft, comfortable armrest, and then we have a pretty deep pocket that has a finger tip grip in there. You could fit a whole lot of extra change in there. Two bottle holders and some snacks. The first of the Harman Kardon 14 speaker sound system. Baby looking Subaru on the door sill plate. Power options, snap of leather. They are extendable, which is really cool. You have some more features here, controls. You have the fuse panel, you have the hood release. You have some rubberized pedals and some really nice floor mats. Look at that panoramic sunroof. It's beautiful. You have another storage spot right here on the Ascents, big enough to fit four cheese sticks wide or a men's wallet. Firing it up with push button start. First thing you should do after this point is turn on the heated steering wheel, which is really nice. For 23, you have a toggle switch rather than the extra paddles. So if we toggle through the settings, MPG is only as bad as is because of all the time idling where this is a brand new vehicle. Volume controls here, all the adaptive cruise controls here. If you wanna do uh, auto um, cruise control without eyesight, you can turn it on and then hold that button and you'll see the symbol change. Now we would be in cruise without eyesight. 11.6 inch screen, we have cooled seats, heated seats, all the options for HVAC stay down here, which is really nice. This one of course has the navigation I mentioned. 12 volt wireless charging, aux, USB-C, USB. If you want to play around with the paddles, drop it down to manual mode. Play some musical simulated gears all you want. Electronic parking brake, a couple cup holders. We got a lift tray that you can fit even more change if it doesn't all fit in the door pocket. Felt lined, no plugins, but it is quite spacious for this class of vehicle. 
we have the digital rear view camera, which is awesome, but it does take a little bit of time to get used to. And you can control a few interesting things. You can control the brightness up and down, side to side, rotation, things like that. You can set the home link system. You do have the camera to keep an eye on grandma in the back seat, or if the kids are misbehaving, you know exactly who's touching who. You have a sunshade, of course. We're gonna leave it open though. And then if it was a nicer day, we'd pop open the sunroof because it's so nice up there. Otherwise, let's show you the 360 degree camera before we move on to the rest of the vehicle. Pretty cool. Perfectly fits our surroundings. All right, we're gonna turn off the car, hop in the back seat. Autumn green metallic paint sure looks good on this one. Darkly tinted on the back windows and the rear. We have the sunshade. We have an actual cup holder. Really nice lining around the window, our only control right there. Deep pocket, you can fit a good amount of stuff in there. Maybe some fruit loops and then two bottles of water and whatever else your heart desires fits right there. Child safety locks would be right here if you want those on. You have a few steps to get up to the roof rails and you have the options to fold the seats down to recline and if you're in the back, that's how you get out. Sitting behind yourself, I fit 11, I have all the room I need. I could be a little bit generous. I'll even slide forward. I can still be a backseat driver, enjoy the panoramic roof, and tell the front what I need, what I want. I have all the controls I need. USB-C, USB, cup holders down here, and 120 volt. So I could plug in a toaster. I could conveniently set it right here, and I can off for a good time. Trying to get behind herself, make sure that the armrest is up and out of the way. The back seats, the Napa leather looks really good back here. You of course have another Harman Kardon speaker, couple bottle holders, a change tray, child safety latch. No center armrest though. But it looks pretty identical on the other side with a few additional plugins. All right guys, let's get out of here. Vents and everything up top. Drop it, slide it, and escape. Pretty easy to get out of. Decent departure angle. Again, 8.7 inches of ground clearance with the steel tire back there. Dual exhaust, and then you can see a number of the sensors on the back. You have the camera back here, one touch lift. And the pin code button, I have a video on how to set that. It's a really cool feature. I use it like once a week. I suggest you check it out if you don't already know about that. One touch lower and lock feature. You got a good amount of storage space back here. You can drop the seats and have over 75 cubic feet of storage. And then kind of a wet tray. You could fit something, swimsuits, a wetsuit, things like that down there. Some of this ice and snow that's falling down. Otherwise, it looks like we have our sunshade privacy shade down there and then in those spots you'd have the tools to get that spare tire off and switched out one touch lower when the vehicle's unlocked so is the gas door when the vehicle's locked so is the gas door chrome handle door panel looks very nice we have identical features map pocket backpack staying safe really hasn't moved around much If you're riding shotgun, what do you get? Wood, trim, stitching, nice comfortable armrest, identical speaker, and storage space. Power options, of course, no embroidery, no logo stamped into the leather. You do get a tray here. And then the locking glove box, which isn't huge. It is felt lined, looks really good. And I don't see a USB or a 12 volt in there like you get on the Outback. But let's get around to the front. Let's see what the sole powertrain of the Ascent looks like. Where is that 2.4 turbo? I want to see it. There it is. Because this is a pretty big vehicle, the turbo engine is sunken down a little bit compared to some of the other turbo Subarus. 
You of course get the ducting to the top mount intercooler that goes through the grill. You have the battery positive terminal with the red, negative over here, windshield reservoir, coolant reservoir, top mount oil filter is a fantastic design. Engine oil fill, 0W20, brake fluid. You then on the passenger side, get air vents to the ducting, to the filter, through all the magical plumbing that leads it through the Spinny Boy Turbo to make that 260 horsepower. Then it goes through the air cooler to cool down one last time, through the throttle body, and then it's diverted into the four cylinders of the horizontally opposed boxer. If you look really close, you can see the line down there that divides the two halves of the engine. Next to it, you got the alternator up top, the oil dipstick, and then you have this little plastic serpentine belt cover so you don't lose some fingers in the engine bay because I guarantee they're going to be hard to find. In the back, if you look really close, you can see where the CVT connects, but there's quite a bit of room. If this ever had to be worked on, I don't think it would be that big of a challenge. Let's drop the hood, take it for a drive. And we're going to teleport inside and give you initial driving impressions and then the 0-60. to 60. Turning radius is fantastic. Handles the snow really well with these stock tires. Handles really well. You feel very, very in control in the ascent. The Harman Kardon sounds great. Whether you're listening to Elton John or another of your favorite artists, you're gonna be enjoying it. It's gonna be a good time. Acceleration and getting up to speed isn't even a problem. You feel like you sit very high up in this vehicle. And everything's just where you want it to be. The steering wheel is great. Having the heated option is fantastic. Armrest is wide. I think it could accommodate a lot of arms. Same thing on the center console. Everything's right where you need it to be. You're not having to reach, you're not having to look for things. Acceleration, just in the mid range of the RPM band is fantastic. It gets right up to speed without having to work too hard. Sometimes the CVT holds its RPM, sometimes it plays around and it is a little bit unpredictable. But overall, it's a smooth transmission. I think Subaru does pretty well for it being a CVT. He uh, heads up display is great when you are in cruise control. It's just a series of seven lights that indicate quite a bit of information for you. And visibility, of course, is fantastic for even being a larger 4,500 pound SUV. Subaru likes to give you big windows. We obviously are on a wet road today, driving through snow. It does great. And just going on the road, getting up to speed. It's not that windy out today. So it's hard to compare it to some other vehicles on other days. But the cab does feel very well insulated. I don't hear a lot of road noise. You can hear the engine a little bit. No turbo spool though, I can't really hear that. More just the RPMs building of a typical boxer sound. Brakes work really well at maybe a third capacity. Doesn't take much. Having the rear view digital mirror is a pretty cool feature. Takes a little bit of time to get used to, but it's not that bad. I really don't have any complaints about the Ascend. I think it's a good vehicle. It's just deciding is the Touring the one that you want? Do you have 50 grand to spend or to finance or potentially lease? Is this is this the vehicle that you and your family are going to want or going to need? It's really nice. If you can swing it, it's a good offering. I think basically all the Subaru models and trim levels seem to be quite fair for the price range that they are in today's economy. Where this is a $50,000 SUV and the average new vehicle right now is $48,000. does not this seem a lot nicer than the average vehicle? But that's for you to decide. What I'm going to decide is what I think of the 060, so let's get right to that on our private road. 060 
We are with traction control off. Density altitude is 2200 feet, so we're down on power about three and a half percent. I'll do a brake rev on the CVT and we'll see what I can do. I'm posting this with the GPS, so I'll show you what the foot of rollout excluded would be. That's the way the magazine rates it, but what I'll verbalize in this film is what it actually does zero to 60 given real life situations on our private road. It is a little bit wet out. I don't expect us to get wheel spin, but we'll see what it can do. RPM's holding where they make peak power, around 5,000. And true 060 came in at 8.24. A little bit slower than the magazine would suggest, but this is real world testing and it's unloaded. It's just me in the car. So keep in mind, it could be a little bit slower if you're weighted down with your family stuff or if you're towing, but it feels more than adequate for this size of vehicle and it's faster than most of the other Supers. Final thoughts of the Ascent Touring is this is the pinnacle of what Subaru has to offer. It has all their latest and greatest features. It's a really good three row unibodied SUV with capable all-wheel drive, ground clearance, pretty good MPG for the power level, what this actually can put out as you guys had seen. And then the styling, the creature comforts, the storage capacity, it offers a lot of really good stuff. I think this is a really good competitor against the Traverse. Some of the other three row SUVs that aren't body on frame, truck based and aren't the traditional minivan if you're not ready to accept that. I think the Ascent is a really good vehicle and for 50 grand, it's hard to get more features on another brand name. If you guys enjoyed my vehicle review, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing to help support my channel as it's growing quickly. And if you're interested in this vehicle, check it out, the link's below. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next review. Take care.